So hey guys, what's up? This is Ezekiel and today we'll be starting a brand new <laughs> King of Thieves Let's Play series. Yeah, legitimately. So um, I was considering to do this for a very long time, but I wasn't really sure what the solution was because obviously on my iPhone 6, I already had an account and I was already like kind of rocking it, you know, getting to the... Uh, what was that very last league after like, I forget what it's called. I know it's like diamond or crystal or like the ultimately like something along those lines. But um, I wasn't really sure how to start a new series just because I was already so far into the game. But what I did is that with a little bit of some research and stuff, I actually figured out a way to play King of Thieves again, brand new, all fresh without losing my old stuff. So we're just going to play it right here. And I'm not really sure how long this is going to be like. And first of all, I know that I've already made another Let's Play that I never finished. It's only like three episodes long, but this one's going to be different just because I'm actually recording this on my PC. So what that means is that I'm going to be, be able to be more consistent, longer videos. So they're not going to be just like 15 minutes long. I can actually make them like about half an hour long. And so, you know, it's going to be a lot of fun. And plus, I'm used to playing PC games versus iOS games just because, you know, I've been doing that very often at this point. So... With our new character name, last time I chose my regular name, we're going to go for my next favorite name, which is, um, if I can even get the letters correctly right here, we're going to go with Pocket Island. Now, why? Because, I don't know, the abbreviation is Pi, which is pretty cool, but Pocket Island on its own sounds pretty damn awesome, and I usually use that name first, that's my first choice, and then if that doesn't work, then I use a second name. And if that doesn't work, then I use just Ezekiel as my third choice. So let's just get right into the game. And look at that. It does uh, work pretty nicely. And I did do a test recording before this just to make sure that everything was working okay. And let me just lower the volume a little bit on my earphones right here. It's a little bit loud, but uh, for you guys, I'm going to edit that out to make, it sh to make sure that the audio of my voice and the game is okay with each other. So feel free to leave your comments if it's okay for you. Anyways, we got this guy named Jeffy or Geffy. We're going to just call him Jeff just because that sounds pretty natural and normal. So, psst. I'm breaking you out. Get to the door. He sounds pretty uh, freaking epic. And he also looks kind of cool. Like, I don't know if anyone noticed this, but for some reason, he looks like he would definitely be some sort of, like, a Mario character. I don't know why. It's like when I see this little, um, his face right there, it reminds me of looking, like, directly into the face of, like, a boo for some reason. I don't really know. I don't really know if you guys see the resemblance, but, you know, I just see it. Anyways. So it's pretty simple. Since I'm playing on PC, the way to jump is just to left click. So, you know, it's pretty much just like the iOS and Android versions. So it's not too difficult. And I'm actually thinking that this is a lot better than just clicking on the screen on like a device. Just because with like the clicks on a PC, you can be a little bit more accurate with your jumps. So, you know, it's, this might be useful for things like um, different types of jumps. Uh, such as, uh, I don't know, the edge saw jump and stuff like that. And look at this! The tutorial has actually changed because you can see that in the background, you can see the uh, the new ice land thing that was added not too long ago, actually, just a couple of weeks ago. So anyways, look familiar? No, not, or sorry, look familiar? Not yet? Well, maybe you'll remember that later. Since you've just escaped the prison, you need a place to live. And by live, he means just our, our base of operation, essentially, where we just, uh, you know, everyone starts here. I know, like, you know, it's kind of interesting whenever I do talk to, you know, the so-called professional players or people that have gone really far into the game. And I'm just like, do you remember your first time when you got into your first totem in the game? And they're just like, hey, yeah, kind of. But, you know, it's only when you when you re go to it again, then you, you kind of have this like nostalgic feeling when you're just like, oh, yeah, I was a. Uh, very very new to this game and I remember my first dungeon I said totem I meant to say dungeon but here we go so this does look um actually I forgot that you start in different uh everyone starts and has different bases so you know that's not too weird but um I always thought that the the first base you have the totem is always the same but I guess that's not the case 
So let's get a little bit of gold right there. It also has a magic totem that will make you rich, kinda. Well, rich in a sense of you have a lot of gems in your totem and then, you know, you get to climb the ranks and be the best of the players, unless you're a hacker and then they still let you in the top 10, you know, there's a lot of conspiracy going on with the King of Thieves community. Anyways, these gems are your main treasure. So maybe I'll talk about this for the newer players just because I didn't realize that, you know, if people are watching this video and they they come from the PC, sort of, the games that I've been playing. So King of Thieves is essentially a game where it's like, you know, if you play Clash of Clans, I can use that as a starting base. So it's a multiplayer game online and the whole purpose is that you collect gems and you have to try to steal gems from other players to increase your own, um, your own gem, I guess, pile or uh like amount the amount of gems that you have and so with your amount of gems you're the higher that you have the more rich you are and then the higher ranks you can climb to be a better thief so you know overall you're trying to become the king of thieves so that's pretty much the game right there a, a bit of a summary really so insert a gem so this totem right here you use it you know you pick up a gem you drop it right here and you do rituals and this is basically how you combine gems together so that you have more space for more gems and then combine those gems to make bigger gems and so forth goes the cycle of life yeah okay so you know the trouble with rituals they take time to complete that's pretty much the gimmick to most games these days you know it's like you know, you're not gonna play the game unless there's some sort of a time thing. And oh no, there's a white shadow! There's a... Look at this dude! His red eyes! Ugh. Just passing through my traps. I don't like how this one's just right there. And look at that. He just instantly steals my gem. There's no roulette. There's nothing of that kind. He just takes it and then just disappears. He doesn't even go back to the door. I don't know. But um, another player, aka just the tutorial dude, has just stolen your gem. So let's edit the dungeon to improve the defenses. Now... If this was more of a free kind of thing, I would definitely just, um, you know, put them like, I don't know, like there, I move the door down here as well, move like, make a, a saw edge jump kind of thing, but you know, it's going to tell you just to do this. So the edit dungeon thing, essentially, is just where you edit your dungeon, make your base a little bit better, and so it makes it harder for other players to get into your base. So essentially, it's kind of like um, if you've played the, uh, and this game is made by Zeptolab, by the way. So if you've played any of their games, like the Cut the, Cut the Rope series, then it's kind of like that puzzle aspect where you go from point A to point B. So you start at the door, you go to the totem, and you have to bypass a lot of traps to get to the door safely. Or, at, sorry, get to the totem with uh, as little damage as possible. So over here is the attack area where you can see, you know, the whole map of the area. Essentially, this is like the single player story mode in a, in a way. Also like the puzzle mode. And then here, find matches. This is where you can find other enemy players. So we're going to be attacking this guy, Shady95. Let's do this. So every base has this like lock system in the doors. Now, as you get further into the game, those locks will increase in value, making it a little bit difficult to break through unless you have the sufficient amount of keys to do so. But um, early on, it's not too much of a problem. So this isn't too much of a big jump right here. And obviously I say that and I just die instantly. Now, for some reason, there's a bit of a delay whenever I click. I've noticed that it's like, it's not too noticeable, but it's like, Maybe I want to say a second when I click it and then actually registers it as a jump. So it's kind of sucky, but um, I mean, this is the best alternative for what I wanted to do to play this as a series on the channel. Just because, you know, King of Thieves, people like the longer videos. And I just thought, hey, this makes perfect sense for me to do this. So anyways, we've got our gem back right here. Nice and awesome. Let's just put it back into this just to, you know, resume that. And so, well done. You, I can notify you when other players steal your stuff. Um, no thanks. Just because, you know, we're playing on this on PC. It's n nothing too necessary. So over here is your achievements, essentially, and or missions. People call achievements missions whatever i just call them achievements just because that's what they were originally supposed to be but then you have to get rewards for them as well now so edit your dungeon and we get orbs for clicking a button and moving one trap to like you know three blocks to the left two blocks down pretty much so use this knowledge to regain your treasure and become the king thief so there you go he basically said what i just said in like a couple sentences right there so we'll meet again soon and goodbye Okay, so more onto the interface right here. Again, this is for new players, because you know I, I assume that people who are, would watch this video 
either know the game really well or are just getting into it. So over here, actually, I don't think you guys can even see my mouse, which kind of sucks, but on the top left corner where you see like the green sun area where like the giant one inside it, that is your experience and level bars right there. So the more experience you gain, which is the green orbs that you may have noticed when we were playing, the more like the more you collect them, the higher level you will become. And to my knowledge, being higher level, it just means that you're going to face higher level other higher leveled bases from their players to get better gems and whatnot. And then over here, you have your three main currencies. You have your gold or coin. No, I think it's gold. Your orbs and then your keys. So the keys are used to, as you may notice or may expect, use them to break through locks to get into other bases. The orbs is kind of like that, you know, pay to play currency where you use that to get um, extra speed ups and stuff to essentially like to boost your production values and whatnot so that you can you don't have to wait so long and then the gold is the main currency where you use it to buy upgrades upgrade traps uh, base upgrades and stuff like that i'll get into that in a moment and so here are the base upgrades right here now of course there are actually um all these upgrades but we can't get them yet just because we have to kind of climb the castle tree like structure so you start down here and make your way to the top and I think what I'll do to start off is I'm actually going to focus for now on the lockpick capacity. Just because the locks and this isn't super useful. Because the locks, you know, typically if you're starting out and you have a really good base, then you want to do something called skull farming or sculling for short. And so what that means is that you just let people die continuously, collect the skulls, and you get a lot of gold from it. But I'll explain that as, we, as that comes up. Here is your gold mine where you collect your gold, pretty standard. Here's your totem, we've already gone through that, so you know, here are your gems. You can add more slots, which costs some orbs, but it's kind of, it's pretty useful actually, so that you can carry more gems, so that you can have, uh, you can raid more often and stuff like that. And then over here is your guild chat area. This is actually a new feature that was added, you know, well, it's not really new anymore, but it was added quite a while ago, but... Uh, if you're in a guild, you can uh, chat with them and stuff over here. This is where it gets a little bit complicated. So this is like, um, you know, you find your leagues, your guilds, the top guilds, and your friends list, tips and tricks. And by the way, for some reason, I don't know why, it's like, I never found it to be quite worthwhile to go to the tips and tricks, but you can go here if you need to find more information and stuff like that. I really wish that they would add my channel here but for some reason because, you know, not for like promotional sakes, just because, you know, that's what all YouTubers want, but more so because I have a lot of guides and stuff like that that would be useful for the game, and I think that'd be cool if they added here, but that's just my opinion. So you can read this if you need further help with the game, but that's there for you if you need it. Also the forums and Facebook page, all that fun stuff. Top guilds, as you may expect it, these are groups of players that band together and essentially just make their way to the top. So, number one right now is Michelo, and if I can find my actual guild for my other account, it should be here somewhere. We actually lost quite a few members, though, due to some recent, uh, you know, fails and stuff like that. But uh, actually, what am I doing? There is a search button up here. So, if I were to type in just my name right here, like so... I should be able to, in theory, find my guild, and that's not what I want to do. Um, right here. So it looks like there's a copycat guild. That kind of sucks, but um, what is this? Yeah, that's, I'm actually not really sure why there's two guilds, but maybe the, maybe his name's Ezekiel as well. But this is my actual guild right here. So there I am. There's my actual person, Ezekiel. Obviously, best name ever, I have to say. And so, um, you know, there's me right there. But anyways, that's just the top guilds for you. Um, you can make guilds and or join a guild but you have to beat the one league first and so these are the leagues right here so as you can see yeah i know pretty intense competition like legitimately this guy's pretty high up when you start at level one it's not the easiest thing in the world to get a lot of gems really quickly but if you're able to then uh, you know you might get lucky find some big bases so we got our first guy right here his name is jace and as you can see there are a lot of tiers. Actually, it doesn't stop here if you think that's the case. It actually goes even further than that. So, you know, when the time comes, then uh, we'll talk about that in more details. But uh, the win league and stuff, it's all here. And I'm not going to go into too much detail just because, you know, it takes a lot to explain. But hopefully I've done a good job for the first 15 minutes of talking about the main mechanics of the game. So, for congratulations on your first enhanced gem. And so... You know, every time you finish a ritual, at least for the first couple of levels, it will help you greatly for leagues and stuff like that. So here it goes. It goes back to this. When I just got here, 
I already talked about this, but uh, Lord Raston, this guy right here, he's uh, kind of important to the main storyline into this story right here, but um, I'll get into that as time goes on. They've also changed the, uh, a little bit of a fun fact, they've changed the designs of um, a lot of these characters right here. I remember him looking a lot less, uh, they made them look a lot more cartoony, which I understand why they would do that, but I kind of prefer the old models a lot better just because it looks a lot more realistically more appealing to my taste. But anyways, we're fighting against or competing against this dude who is the champion of the Wooden League. He's pretty standard, not too terrible, but, uh... You know, he's pretty bad, but everyone else is actually not too bad, so it's going to be a little bit... And it's going to be interesting if we can actually beat the Winley as fast as we can. So, to do that... Oh, wait, actually, sorry, we got to put the gem in first, because he's asked me to. But to do that, we need to do some epic raiding right now, so that we can actually get doing... Uh, we can get that done. Or we have the option of doing the single-player maps just, you know, to get to the next tome right here. Or even to these bases right here. So, these single player maps are not too difficult, it's actually pretty simple. So, you can see that on the top right corner you have your little health bar right there, we have 40 HP. And the little bar indicators indicate like uh, your rewards, so if you complete a base perfectly, no deaths, then you will get the flawless um, status right here, which gives you back your keys that you spent, so you know, essentially you can keep doing this as long as you don't die. And then you see the other things right here, so the stars, is that the more you die, the more that the bar lowers. So if you die once, then you lose the key status, and then you're going to, as you keep dying, then uh, the rewards and the stars will lower as you uh, do that, so just be aware of that. So typically, you just want to try and not die as much as possible. And sometimes, you know, well, at least in the single player campaign, you can't beat it, like, you know, without dying, like, right away sometimes. It may take a couple of tries before you can actually get the, uh, you can get the pattern down, and then once you know what to do, then you can easily bypass the bases without any trouble. So, I'm just gonna run through a couple bases right here until we get to either, yeah, maybe just to the first mine, because I can talk about that as well. But, um, it's pretty straightforward. Also, this is pretty helpful, just to kind of get you learning the basics on rating i mean it's not too difficult at all i mean i'm sure that uh most players that start off can easily pass through these bases pretty easily i mean there are some that are kind of difficult even for me but um that's not too much of a that's not surprising just because i'm not really the greatest of all players to be honest i'm not like one of those mlg pros who like wastes their lives on just rating bases. i like to do other things for example, working every single day. Not on weekends, though, but on weekdays, I'm pretty much working, like, 24-7. I haven't really doing that, though. I've been taking, like, a lot of breaks, but um, I'm going to try to get back into the swing of things. So, you know, other than this series, I also want to play another game. It's called Path of Exile. The reason being is because... Oh, I actually died right there. So we lost the perfect stats already. That's not a good thing. See, I meant to do that. So, see, like, even the simplest of, like, dungeons... If you're not paying attention, then you may as well just like die very easily like I did right there. So we're actually leveling up pretty quickly right here. So this is a good way to level up. We got our first, or sorry, our second dungeon right here. So once we complete our first dungeon, then we're going to move on to this one right here. And to do that, um, to move to other dungeons, you basically have to um, use up your primary totem all the way till it's done. And you can tell like how many charges or uses it has left based on the number of teeth that it has in its mouth. So in this case, it has two. So that means we can do two more rituals until we have to move on to the next base. So that's just some more information for you. So let's move on to level seven, yeah. So this one right here, it's kind of interesting. They've actually changed up some of the base designs. Not really sure why, but um, I mean, I kind of prefer the older ones just because they were a little bit easier. Is a little bit more friendlier to the newer players, but you know, there's always the uh, the forum people that have their, you know, opinions that just, uh, even though there's like, what, 30,000, there's probably way more than that. There's like so many King of Thieves players, and somehow the forums that makes like, what, maybe like 5% of the community, like, somehow has their opinions all, like, always has their opinions wins, but you know. It's a weird economy, a weird system. I'm not really one to judge, just because I used to use the forums, but not anymore, just because, you know, it's, uh, meh. It's not really too interesting as it was before. So let's see this last one. Now, this one can be a little bit um, interesting. Difficult, frustrating, a rage, just because, you know, 
the way that these things are placed, but it's not too not too horrible, really. I mean, if you get past the first two cannons, you should be okay. As long as you get up to this ledge, then you should be fine. And then, yeah, so from here, just get to this base, and then there you go. So we got the Flawless, and we got our Ritual done, and we can actually collect another gem, our first gem, actually. So look at that, 320. It's going pretty nicely. Like, one trick that I suggest that you just use the same gem over and over again, because you can see that's going to keep doubling in its um in its quantity right here you can also speed up for free well it's only going to be this one time but uh you know a lot of interesting things that the tutorial does for you so there you go your totem is depleted once this happens then you have to move on to the next dungeon which is right here which i already explained so you know the tutorial it does explain these things for you but um I'm just here to reiterate it so you got this one for free it's not always going to be for free you're gonna have to pay some gold in the next uh in other bases in the future but for now this is our new dungeon so it's asking us to do like all this other stuff so you can upgrade traps to make them better so you know higher level traps means that if players die to them their hp will lower a lot faster this app requires the latest version of apps to play we're gonna do that in just a moment just because we're going to um <laughs> i know i think um like in the um in the Google store, this said that this was actually updated to the max, but I guess there's another update that I'm supposed to get. But uh, regardless, this is our new base right now. So let's just uh, put this right here and let's pick up this new gem, which should be 120. So that's not too terrible. So we're going to mix it right here. Now, one trick actually, before I do this, you can actually mix the same color gems together and you will get a potion, a different potion per color set. So in this case, purple will give this particular potion, but... Since I'm not really worried about potions right now, I just want the highest value, so I'm just going to mix these two together and get the 1000 gem right there. Uh, no thanks, <laughs> all these notifications is kind of annoying, but at the same time, I can see why they would put it there. So, let's, uh, let's actually raid another base right here, like a legitimate base. So, this particular base, hmm. Well, this could be interesting. Let's tr let's try it just because you know I'm feeling up to the challenge, and let's just see. So you click really quickly right here, and let's just see. Actually, yeah, this isn't too bad at all. So you know, well, for the most part, the first couple of bases isn't gonna be too difficult. Now here's the thing. So when you're raiding other gems, there's gonna be this uh, ru roulette thing, and you can see that there is the green side and the purple side. The purple side indicates that if you hit that side you will not steal the gem that you have randomly chosen right here. Now, there are outfits that will help you, um, give you s special effects to this, but I'll get to that in just a moment. And if you land in the green side, then obviously you will get the gem that you have gotten. So, there you go. We got a nice, woo, 265. Actually, I'm going to swap that out for this one real quick. So, let's cancel this. This one's a lot better, so this is going to give us a slightly higher thing. Let's put this to purple, actually, just because, you know, we have another purple gem. No thanks. A bit annoying, but uh, we'll get to that eventually and so do we have it right now actually we don't have the option so never mind we'll get to outfits uh very soon though i forgot to mention down here um the, these options right here is this is the defense log so so far no one's attacked our base yet this is the missions of course and then this is for if you have if you're in a guild or you have friends then you can actually have people to retrieve your gems and help ret retrieve other people's gems as well so it's kind of a nice system right there but um, anyways, that's just some extra stuff that I forgot to touch just because, you know, this only, like, this game is really, it's kind of interesting, actually. It's an iOS game. Typically, they're not super crazy, unlike if it's like Clash of Clans, then of course, there's a lot to talk about. But uh, this game actually surprisingly has a lot of content to, just, you know, just to look at. Let's be careful right here. And woo, that could have been bad. But uh, looks like we got some really nice gems right here. If we can steal this one, the purple one, that'd be great. And yeah, ooh, look at that, a thousand, wow. Can we actually fit that in this gem, I wonder? I'm not really sure, I don't think so, but we'll try. Yeah, it's too big, so um, early on, you can't fit like the big gems right here because it's kind of cheap, but uh, you know, I think you used to be able to do that just because it was an exploit that you could do to get to the higher levels really, really quickly, but they fixed that, so, you know, you can't really cheat your way through that anymore, which kind of sucks, but, you know, it's perfectly fine with me. And, uh, yeah, so we have another five minutes. We can actually, um, 
I forgot that we were still recording this before, so I guess we'll record it till like, I don't know, when, when my timer says 32 minutes, then we'll stop. But uh, we'll rate a couple more bases, so let's try this one. This one actually looks kind of interesting. So I imagine that, uh, yeah, that's what I thought. So you have to jump like right here. Now you see that I died a couple times, so my bar is only two stars, and lower stars means that you're gonna have less of a chance to steal gems. So that's why the more you die, the less of a chance you're gonna have to steal the gems. So just be aware of that. So make sure that you try not to die when you're raiding bases, and um, you know it'll work out for you. Ooh, no, this one is a bit interesting. It has a silver line gem, which is really surprising because you don't find these normally this early on in the game. But we're gonna try to see if we can do this. So. I think what we're gonna do actually there's a fly right here which might be a problem so let's try our best to kind of lure him over here if we can that's typically the strategy that you want to use come on right here I'm trying to duke him out right here but I don't think it's working so we're just gonna do this and I guess yeah this works out just fine as well so you know things to consider now if we can get that silver gem oh, we didn't get the silver gem but we got this gem right here which is just as good so you know it's not too too terrible um we're running out of space so i'm actually gonna sell this gem right here now typically early on if you're getting gems like a thousand like i'm doing right now then you want to sell the crappy you know 70 gems because they're gonna be pretty much useless you don't want to use those just because they're not super great but uh, keep a couple if you need to for rituals but uh you know i don't recommend uh keeping them at all but anyways we have a base right here a lot of gold not or sorry, no gems at all, so not really worth it. This person, Sasha, Sasha, why don't you have any gems? Jeez, you gotta get on that. Get on to the next dungeon, please, so we can get some gems from you. Um, this one right here, we could raid it, but I don't know. I'm feeling kind of uh, peckish for some good gems again. We actually got we got really lucky with those uh, other bases right there. Um, I am losing gold, though, so that's problematic, but I think we can try this base. Has some decent gems, and hopefully, yeah, okay. And I think, uh, oh, I might have actually messed this up, kind of. It's that red guard, yeah, that red guard, the way it's timed, it's gonna be kind of, uh, yeah, so you see that if I do that as well, it's not gonna work. So I need to lure out the, uh, the fly first before doing anything else. So like this, ah, there you go. So there's always, um... No matter how hard the base is, unless it's hacked, of course, then uh, there's always some sort of solution that you can do. And as you can see, we didn't get the gem that time. We could spend some orbs to re-spin it to get another chance, but since our chances aren't too great, it's not super worthwhile. So if our chances were better, then we could do it again, but uh, in that case, we're not going to. So let's raid another base right here. Let's try to go for... hmm. Well, that one actually had a good gem, but, you know, it was kind of overlapped by other not-so-great gems. So, I mean, yeah, there's a bunch of different types of totems as well. You got the, uh, the two, the two, uh, two hold ones, I guess, which are found really early in the game. And then as you get, ooh, this one's actually not too bad. There's one drop upgrading, two, uh, secret birds, so we should have a good easy time right here. Yeah, here we go. Oh, we actually do not have enough, so... We could watch an ad, and I think we may do that, but hmm, it's going to be difficult to get rid of the video. So I think we're actually going to spend some more, sadly, just because I don't want to do that. <laughs> it takes, uh, it's not that I want to edit it, it's just because, you know, like I could edit it, but it's difficult to do that on PC, at least for me, because I'm not really good at editing on the PC, of course. But uh, let's see if we can get this gem. Oh, no, we didn't. Okay, well, so much for the nine orbs. Geez. So let's, uh, is this done actually? Oh no, it's not. It's gonna take one hour. So as you can see, yeah, it's gonna take a while, but uh, at least we can upgrade this again. So this is gonna take 30 minutes. That's fine. And we may as well upgrade something else. Actually, no, that's a bad idea. Never, uh, never upgrade traps while you're doing rituals unless you have a lot of confidence in your base. And in this case, I don't really have that confidence in me. So maybe, um, no, no, never mind. So we'll do one last base, and then we're going to call it quits for this episode. So hope you guys have been enjoying this because, you know, I have been having a lot of fun. It's, you know, again, this nostalgic feeling. Like, I don't care about being the best of all players. I just like having fun. I like to have fun, sorry. And, you know, going back to these really 
when uh when bases were simple and were easy to raid it's it's gonna get a lot harder as we progress but i like it i like it when the bases are really easy and simplistic but you know that's going to change very quickly if we are successful let's try this one actually this one uses a platform which we have yet to try for ourselves well i've done it myself already but you guys haven't seen it so let's see let's do this okay Ooh, that was kind of uh hmm, interesting okay well, let's do this this time yeah there we go so there's always a an alternate solution can we get a gem this time to finish off the episode and no okay absolutely not i like how it goes directly to the exit it's like no you will not get a gem in this episode so that's pretty much going to be it for this episode, guys. Episode number one of King of Thieves uh, Let's Play, starting from zero to hero. <laughs> that's from a Kaja Clans reference, by the way. But anyways, guys, that's pretty much going to be it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. If you liked the video, hit the like button, comment, subscribe, and uh, leave any suggestions on specific things that you want me to see in the channel. Otherwise, I'm just going to do my own thing for the Let's Play, you know. Just go to, you know, do raids, single player maps, edit the base every now and then, show you guys some progress, and uh, just uh, do things in the future. So, that's going to be it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.